Uh, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise and speak on this bill in continuation. And I was talking about the three stages of the PATH program, which will support up to 120,000 young people over four years. The first stage, getting them ready, preparing young people. The second stage, giving them a go, trialling them through an internship supported by a youth bonus wage subsidy and voluntary internships of between four and 12 weeks where employers will receive an incentive of $1,000 up front and a young person, an intern, will receive a $200 a fortnight payment to supplement their New Start allowance on top of their New Start allowance. And then, of course, the third part of this program is hire, uh, giving young people a job. And to, in order to provide that incentive to employers, uh, the government is proposing that businesses will be eligible for a youth bonus wage subsidy of between six and a half and ten thousand dollars from the first of January next year. Mr Deputy Speaker, this bill is needed because it's required to ensure job seekers are not disadvantaged by taking part in the youth jobs path measure announced in the budget. Uh, to encourage eligible, eligible young job seekers to take up a PATH internship, participants, of, as I've mentioned, will receive $200 fortnightly in addition to their social security payments. And, um, the bill ensures that these payments are not considered as income for social security and veterans' entitlement purposes. So that's obviously very important. We don't want to do anything that will impact on their social security entitlements. So it will amend the Social Security Act and the Veterans Entitlements Act, the Social Security Administration Act, to support the Youth Jobs Path measure. Uh, now, Mr Deputy Speaker, I do want to make some particular comments in relation to the member for Melbourne's contribution and more broadly in relation to some of the opposition that we've heard from members opposite. This is an incredibly important program for young people. And in contrast to those opposite and to the Greens, um, here we are as a government looking at every possible measure to drive young people into work. And we are incredibly proud of what we are doing. And it is absolutely fallacious to suggest that this is a $4 an hour program. Uh, what we are providing is a $200 a fortnight bonus. That's in addition to New Start, $200 extra per fortnight, here, here. which will put young people into the position of an internship for a limited period of time. And very importantly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, will give employers the opportunity to trial someone, to train them. And we all know that when an employer brings anyone new into their business, uh, there is a high degree of commitment by that employer mm. to introduce a young person into the workplace, to train them, to get yeah. them job ready. And an employer does not do that unless he or she or the company has a commitment to bring someone into their organisation. And it's also a great opportunity for young people to learn new skills to get a taste of that industry, to get an understanding of the business, mm -hmm. to get a sense of self-worth, to be encouraged, to be inspired, and of course, uh, in doing so, to receive this important bonus. So it's really regrettable that both from the Greens and from the Labor Party, while we've had this criticism, what are their ideas? Mr Deputy Speaker, what are their ideas? And we have seen no ideas from members opposite. We've seen no contrary idea from uh, the Labor Party. And what we are doing as a government is everything possible to drive jobs, to drive new programs, to look at new ways of getting young people into work. And you know, it's not just through this program. We've got our Try, Test and Learn $96 million scheme introduced by the Minister for Social Services asking all members of the community, uh, volunteer groups, community organisations, uh, members opposite, 
to come up with innovative employment ideas to drive employment. And what do we hear today from the member for Melbourne? No ideas. It is a zero ideas zone from the Greens and from members opposite. We're actually saying, and we recognise government doesn't have all the ideas, and we're saying to Australians, here is nearly $100 million for an innovative scheme, like a scheme that's being promoted and um, funded in my region, the GROW scheme, uh, which, um, whereby G21 and Give Where You Live have done some wonderful work to try and address the very significant problems with youth employment, particularly in the Geelong region. And uh, we are making some very important inroads, despite uh, some members opposite, and particularly the member for Cryo, <laughs> trying to talk down our local economy at every opportunity. With unemployment in the Geelong region currently sitting, the last month's unemployment, at 4 per cent, and a three-month rolling average of 5.8 per cent. So despite our challenges across the region, we are doing really so much better than the Labor Party have ever given us credit for, Mr Deputy Speaker. And while we get the criticism, what is remarkable in this debate is we have no ideas. So not only do we have our Try, Test and Learn scheme on top of our PATH scheme, we have a Transition to Work scheme, which uh, is a, an alternative for the job active providers, which supports young people aged 15 to 21 through intensive pre-employment support to improve work readiness and help them into work or education. We have a Parents Next program, which helps eligible parents to identify their education and employment goals, again to help them get into work. We have our empowering youth initiatives, again to support innovative approaches to helping young unemployed people move into work. We are absolutely committed. Mr Deputy Speaker, we are absolutely doing everything we can to drive those jobs, to drive those opportunities. And uh, as I say, it's really disappointing that we haven't seen some bipartisanship yeah, yeah. on what is a very, very significant measure. And in fact, uh, the Minister for Employment, Senator Michaelia Cash, who's done an extraordinary job in leading our charge in passing the Registered Organisations Bill, a bill, of course, which is all about putting Australian workers first, uh, in contrast to Labor, which wanted to back uh, the, uh, um, the union um, organisers, including those who had engaged in fraud and corruption, which is very disappointing. Our yeah. government is focused on putting Australian workers first. And it was yeah. wonderful to visit uh, the minister the with the minister King's cars and to talk. The member for Wakefield. Point of order: the member is reflecting on members opposite and saying they support fraud, and that is not the case. And she should withdraw. withdraw. That's exactly what she said. That's exactly. I call the member for Karangamai. If may I have the call, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, I will not withdraw. That is not what I said. I said that the Labor Party did not support a bill which combats uh, union organisers engaging in fraud, engaging in corruption, engaging, engaging in dodgy union deals. And it's a great opportunity for me to say it again. What an absolute okay. disgrace no it is well, that the Labor Party did not support the registered organisations bill, Order. in contrast to the likes of the former Order. Labor Member Attorney General Rob McClelland, in contrast to the likes of Martin Ferguson, in contrast to the likes of Bill Kelty, who all stood up and said, yes, we are, we do require this reform. We do need to put Australian workers first. So thank you for the opportunity to make that point. And it is a shameful day when the Labor Party would not support this vital industrial relations reform for our nation. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, as I was saying, the Minister for Employment, Senator Michaelia Cash, we visited in May King's Cars, one of the many local employers in our region, Order. and very, very proudly talking about the Youth Path Employment Program getting a lot of support, and we're very enthusiastic as to how we work locally with our local employers to make sure that as many employers as possible take up this opportunity, give young people a chance, because that it is, that's what it's all about. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, everything our government 
is doing is about putting the Australian worker first. Everything our government is doing is about driving jobs, and we are so proud. And if I look at what we're doing locally, Mr. Deputy Speaker, our massive investment in infrastructure, including at long last the $690 million that's been provided for rural and regional roads in, in uh, Victoria. Uh, we had to drag the Labor Party kicking and um, screaming in Victoria uh, on that one, but roads, more investment in rail, uh, our huge commitment to Avalon Airport, all about driving jobs, our massive job creation programs, including a $20 million jobs and investment package for our region, uh, very significant, looking at new investment, new opportunities, new industries, new jobs, including new jobs for young people. Our Geelong Region Innovation and Investment Fund, which has created some 850 new jobs across our region. Our $155 million growth fund. The Geelong Region Job Connections Program, supporting lots of fantastic grassroots job creation programs, including supporting the Pivot Summit that I will be very proudly opening on Friday, driving digital jobs, jobs for the future and jobs for young people. Our focus on advanced manufacturing and what a reflection it was on Labor when they committed only seven or so million dollars to our region in contrast to our very significant investments in advanced manufacturing, an industry growth centre in advanced manufacturing, $4.7 million for Deakin University for the Future Fibres Research Hub, our strong commitment to national stronger regions and our strong commitment to business, small and medium business, delivering those tax cuts that we understand and Labor did understand back in 2011. The Labor Party was very supportive of tax cuts for small and medium-sized businesses because back then they were being quite open with the Australian people, acknowledging that that did drive new jobs, more investment, more opportunities. But now we've seen another blatant, pathetic case of politicking uh, led by the Leader of the Opposition, uh, a, a, a illogical uh, opposition to tax cuts for small business. Our free trade agreements, again, all about driving jobs. And of course, we're getting the economy boosted again, as we did when we abolished the carbon tax, the mining tax, stripping red tape and doing all the other things that we are proudly doing to drive jobs and investment. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is a very important bill for young people and for our nation, and I commend this bill to the House.